How you doing out there? Guess what day it is? It's podcast day. Oh, sucky. Episode 34, Badass Besties in the Building. How you doing, love? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, world. Um, You got Miss Glam over there and you got me, Mo Hazel. We thank you for listening. We hope you subscribe and share us with a friend, you know, spread the love. Are you ready to get into it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's get into it. Weekly Delight is where we take a person, place or thing. It can be an inspirational quote. It can be some food. It can just be whatever is getting us through the week, keeping us pumped and getting us to Friday. So with that being said, Miss Glam, you're up first. My weekly delight this week is my niece started middle school. She's a big, big girl. Hand clap to uh, getting closer to womanhood. Yes. Well, and I'm very excited. It's not to go down too far down the rabbit hole during a weekly delight segment, but she's reinventing herself too. So like she has a new nickname she wants to go by now. So she's becoming like this new person Aww. it's so cute do you like this person <laughs> you look kind of no hesitated. i guess part of it is if she's grown into her own mm-hmm. and she wants to be more independent part of me rejoices sure but another part is sad because me not my baby anymore she ain't not my baby newsflash she wasn't for a little while whatever I still call her. She baby. wasn't since I saw her at the pool. Like it was a wrap. <laughs> I saw her at the pool with a grown body. Oh my gosh! But she's no, still my she's baby. Still sweet, and her mannerisms are like a young lady. So yeah. of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's tell. just interesting seeing that. You know, two days ago she was still, you know, in elementary school, right? And today it's no. My name is this, mm. and this is what we do. Does she and, got a crew? Yes. Oh, snikes. Yes. Is she like a mean girl or a cool girl or what, what What would you, if you had to categorize her, what is she right now? Like a cool kid, a emo? No. Or... So apparently it's no longer cool to be the popular, at least not in her sure. group. Sure, sure, sure. They're the smart, geeky kids. Like She's a nerd. Yes. Okay. Over, a you know. A sophisticated nerd. Anime. Or... You know, they have okay. their own little language. Gotcha. The gotcha. creative But what I like about it is she kind of floats, you know, from like, she's like you, you know how you floated from, you know, you can, you can get along in a lot of different groups. I gotcha. But great. That's going to be great skills as an adult. But she's like, I don't want to be a popular kid. No, they can have that. Yeah. That's too much pressure. It's so cool finding the radar and just being able to just like adapt from group to group to group. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, man. But she says she's not the popular kid. But when I walk on campus and everyone knows her name, I'm her aunt Aww. and they're calling me, you know, so-and-so's aunt going, hi, I know you. And you I sure don't you know the you. Snack lady. Like they low key, like I heard she got the good snacks. Oh no. <laughs> so I'd be like, okay, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Now I haven't been on this campus while she's been in school, but before, like every kid knew me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be because I'm on campus that much, but mm-hmm. that's beside the point. Oh well, that's awesome. Yeah, that's see, an awesome weekly and I guess I got approval. This is the first week like ever I got approval for my I weekly mean, delight. It's because of your niece that you're getting the oh, approval. Whatever. You know what I mean? Um, and you that know, I'm a boo. How can I compete with? No, you won't. I guarantee you won't. I'm boohooing on it right now. You can't compete with a child going to a first day of school, especially middle school. You know what I mean? You can't compete. Like my news feed was like full of kids. I know. That's the one day I'm on Facebook like yeah. all day because it's just, I don't know, just positive. Yeah, it is. It kids. is. And just seeing them old, look though. like they go from this chubby cheek kid yes. to like, oh my God, did you grow overnight? Yes. Because yeah, yeah. you only see them that one day every year. Absolutely. So like, it's like. Whoa, I remember when I saw they f- first grade. Right, why picture. you got facial hair in your third grade? I'm just Because <laughs> he's uh, 15. Exactly. Oh, okay, I miss, I miss some years. I miss some years. Okay, well, that's what's up. Um, So my weekly delight, Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. <laughs> oh, okay. you can't say nothing now, can you? No, ya? that's my happy place. Uh-huh. So listen, let me give the disclaimer. We live in beautiful, sunny Florida. I mean, it used to go like every year. I think it was like quintessential for everybody to go like once a year during the summer, at least if you're a Floridian to Orlando to go to one of the water parks or go to one of the theme parks, right? Right? Um, it you seemed can tell like she had money growing up. 
Yeah, when I moved to Florida, listen, listen, <laughs> listen. I didn't have money, but my parents had money. And it's not like they were rich, but it's like when you have only one kid to spoil, you actually can afford to take your child to Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Every year, apparently. No, nah, it was it was a few years. Uh, Every year. A minimal, rattle, a minimal rabbit so hole, spoiled. though. For my 16th birthday, I didn't want a birthday party. And I lived in Virginia, and I was like, just send me to Orlando by myself. I had a chaperone, obviously, but... Yeah, no parents. I went to Orlando for a week. Ballin'. Lord have mercy. <laughs> that was ballin' to me. Um, but anyways, I haven't been since Harry Potter got built. That was how long ago? Years. Exactly. Like, almost double digits, right? Not uh, quite. I'm being dramatic, right? It might be. Is it really? I haven't been since Harry Potter got built because, you know, I was like, I'm not going. I'm, I'm a, it's too crowded. It's still crowded. All these weirdos with the suits on. and Hey, don't talk about my people. I know because they're about to really like, I, we're going to lose like 12 viewers because I said weirdos. No, they'll listen because of me because I'm one of those weirdos. Okay, got it, got it. Well, some interesting people, air quotes, that wear the suit. I just didn't want to be involved with the phenomenon, the busyness of it. And I just forgot because about it and I haven't sucks. gone. So Miss Glam is going and I'm going to go with her for her birthday. And I'm going to wear all that. Oh, gosh. I'm going to be one of those extra people. For her birthday. Just for her. I don't know if I'm going to really like it. But if I don't like it. The following weekend, I get to go as well, too. Oh, look at that face. She's not going to like it without me. So I'm going with a Floridian, a Floridian bestie, and then I'm going with one of my close friends from VA the following week. So close to friend? make up for- Did you hear that? Close friend. To make up. I mean, he's like a bro. He's like a brother. Okay. I'm okay. just making sure he understands oh, it's close listen, friend. Listen. But nonetheless, to make up for the years of not going, I'm literally going back to back in the, what, like a week, a week from now or something like that. It's it's coming up. I'm excited. Oh, crap. I need to book the hotel. Exactly. Get it together because uh, I'm not sleeping in a car. I'm not sleeping in a car. Mm, my dad lives there. I know, but you know. You can sleep in the car. I'll sleep with him. I'll sleep at his house. I don't, well, don't want to go into a pastor's house tipsy. I'm just saying. Uh, I can't help you with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, can you book the room? Just book the room. I drink in front of him. You know, we're going to I mean, just because you a hell, you don't mean I want to. Yeah. He says, <laughs> accepts you as you are. You yeah, I understand. And you just told him you're going to be tipsy. So he already I knows. I mean, he know you. He know I'm with you. So. I'm a goody goody two shoes. Bull crap. It's the only reason why I'm drinking daddy is because Mo Hazel's making me. Because oh, it's my birthday. She said birthday. I had to turn up. And somebody's going to give her a shot for free. You cannot turn down a free yes, drink. Yes, I can. I don't drink shots. But I will take margaritas all night long. Good to know. Take that back. Get her a margarita. Yes. I got you. I got yes. you. All, all night long. long. All right. We're done with the weekly delight. Are you ready for the topic? What is the topic? The power and essence of being a queen. Are you a queen? I'm the queen. I like that. So am I. You can't be the queen. Um, bitch, it can be whatever we want to. No. It's our show. I am the queen. We have okay, to find well, another I'm a article queen. How about for that? You. You're the queen. I'm a queen. Boom. Done. I, you just switch. <laughs> <laughs> See how that works? Anywho, so um, we're going to kind of get into, you know, just the beautiful things about being a woman. You know, what do we love about being a woman? Just the awesomeness of being a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I said it pretty good. I feel like I said woman like 25 times, but that's because all right. Because woman is awesome. That's all you need to know, right? I am woman, hear me roar. Roar. All right, so with that being said, me and you are going to go back and forth on what we find for us individually, the awesomeness of us as a woman. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So do you want to go first? You want me to go first? You can go first. Okay. So my first one I picked is uh, the quiet, unseen strength that we have. Normally, and I'm generalizing, so men don't, not that y'all comment anyway, please comment sometimes, show me some love. But, you know, not that I'm trying to make it seem like I'm pigeonholing all men in this category, but men are known to be the, the physically stronger between the two. It's physical. You can see it. But with women, we have this quiet power and we're also individual with it. Like some people can just have that quiet, still peace in their mind when drama is going on around them and can kind of have a, have their mind set on what they need to do. They're able to manage tasks in the midst of chaos. And that's a strength. You have some people who are able to just go through the day and just like without being tired, just 
manage to get the family together, go to work, come home, take care of the kids, and have to start all over again without complaint. That's a quiet strength. It's almost like a superpower to me how I look at it because you can't see it. We don't know what it is, and I think every woman, it's different. We might have some cases where we're similar, but for the most part, a lot of us, it's it's different. We handle it, and we show our superpowers in different ways. What do mm-hmm. you think? Yeah. Yeah, and so for me, I think with my superpower, I just love the fact that team no sleep over here. If I need to get it done, I'll get it done. You know what I mean? If I, I need to get it done, I'll do what I got to do to get it done. And don't get me wrong, I might complain later about it, but in the midst of it, I'll just got to do it, got to do it, got to do it, and, and just can kind of focus and get the job done. And so that's kind of like my my superpower, outlasting the last man standing when it comes to doing a task. Everybody sleep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure it happens. And I love that about me, and I love that I'm, I have that in me to do it, you know, because you just don't think you can when you have a tiny little body. Yeah, I said it. I got a tiny little body. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and you just don't think you can, or sometimes people will try you and think you can't, and then you just go out there and just got this. Hold my cape. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, what about you? I'm gonna go superficial. Okay. First. Uh oh. And that's about right. I think for me, one of the things that I put was the accessories that are available for women, in terms of not like just jewelry and um clothes but heels and makeup and just the overall tendency for you to be girly yes hence the word girly but just the not so much the expectation but the celebration that you know women should be pampered you know get your heels get your nails done the women should be pampered and, you know, get your, na- get your nails done, put your heels on, throw some red lipstick on, you know, that type of stuff. But um, I just, to me, that's one of the, yeah, the perks of being a woman. Sure. Um, that you just, there's an endless supply of things that just make you great. So as a woman, I mean, did you... Did you start wearing accessory and heels when you were younger or did you start doing it when you became a young adult? Like, when did you learn that this was like the cool part of being a woman? So my shoe size has been the same since I was in the fifth grade. Oh, geez. And as soon as I was in women's sizes, Mm -hmm. I started wearing heels. I mean, not to school and stuff, but you know, I remember I just wanted heels. Okay. I have always loved heels. Side note, how you feel about Charm and Charlie, man? I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> she was the Charm and Charlie queen, and they're shutting it down. So uh, that's like the accessory store. <laughs> uh, like the mega accessory store. Okay. I lived in that store. You did. My job is like 10 minutes away from one. You know what? Stressful much, days you know at how work. how much money you're going to save, though? That's no, great. No, it's not. I'll find, <laughs> a, I'll find somewhere else to spend it. Trust me. <laughs> Obviously. What about makeup? So did you figure it out on your own did you just like someone taught you i still don't know how to put makeup on but i love lipstick you know yeah, we I love do. going to sephora and playing I'll the give lipstick you that. i don't know if i'll do the heels but i love some makeup and i love a good lipstick now and i See, think i just we discovered that what two three years ago yeah we were just in there playing with different colors yeah we used to be lip gloss queens <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> get me wrong. i still got my lip gloss oh no yeah it's popping yeah we can do that but the the matted lip yes yeah okay well that's a cute one i like that that's a really nice one yeah yeah femininity femininity yeah man okay well my uh second one is the ability to adapt to any environment i'm not saying men can't do it but there's a fine art to when women do it and and what i mean in particular is the places that we're not supposed to be you know like in the boardrooms you know it's not Sometimes it's kind of like they don't want women in there or, you know, uh, or even in going for presidency. You know what I mean? Just those type of breaking ceilings type 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 movements. And even though I haven't clearly ran for president or anything like that, I love the ability to know that wherever I go and whatever I do. And, and honestly, and in my personal life, I have I have done that. You know, um, I've done some personal passion projects that honestly not many women are invited to that club. And so I love being a part of the the club of saying, 
I don't care. I can do it too. You know what I mean? And I really love that poster, that Yes I Can Rosie poster. That's like a motto for me for sure. I actually need to go ahead and do like a photo like that or dress <laughs> like her for Halloween. But 40th I'm, birthday shoot. Yeah, man, for real. But no, I love the ability to say if I can't be there, you know, if, if it's kind of like one of those well, women don't, women aren't allowed there or, you know, we, we don't really have women typically in these positions or, or doing these types of things. I'm like, well, you got one today, you know, and I love being that type of chick to just say, I'm going to do it. I want to be one of the boys and uh, raise the bar for the girls. So that's my other. Love yeah. And I, I mean, as far as like the no limitations, I think with, I think with women, um, even though they place those limitations on us like that, yeah, man. there is a level of acceptance when we go, yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah. And you know what else I love for the most part, when you're doing it, even if you're doing it alone, women cheer you on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, you know, after you've done it, you'll get this You'll get the accolades from everybody, but then there's a secret society of accolades from women that says, I see you. You yeah. know what I mean? That was that was awesome. And so I do it for them. I you know, I know that I we were very fortunate to grow up with some female heroes. Um, Shirley Chisholm, you know what I mean? Oprah Winfrey. I love me some Oprah. I want to be Oprah, man. I'm like the broke Oprah. <laughs> we're the broke Oprah and Gail. <laughs> Broke Oprah and Michelle Obama over here. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I love that I had that and I got to see that in my lifetime with people, beautiful women. And I just kind of want to be the next generation. So your niece, my niece, the kids, you know, that we we encounter and mentor, that they can look up to us and say, yeah, we want to be like you guys. You know, yeah. I like that. So for my number two, I put, so I'm not a mom. Okay. But I put aunt that special bond you have with your nieces nephews and you know that's just something that I mean I can't speak for everyone else but for me that being able to raise that individual and see them from being you know a baby and see them come into personality and watch them grow and you know, feed them, you know, for them to blossom yeah, and become, man. you know, the wonderful being that they're going to be. There's no greater joy, at least for me. Yeah. There's no, and not just that, not only is it rewarding, but it really makes you see who you are because their eyes, they tell no lies. Yeah, man. <laughs> Those little humans are very honest. So they'll call you out. So you have to be very true in who you are and do what you say and do because they'll hold you accountable. They do hold you every accountable every time. They Be- got a good memory when they need to. Yes, they do. But when you need them to like pick up a toy, they forget. They, exactly. You know like, they don't pay not one lick yeah, of attention. Yeah, I know what you mean. For you, you know, you have your niece that kind of lives with you for the most part, as much as the parents get them, right? Mm-hmm. So, do you feel an extra closeness? You know what I mean? Just because she's do you, okay, what I'm saying is the fact that you are fortunate enough to have her live with you part time, do you feel like that closeness was there because you guys got to live and be on close quarters? Well, a little bit of both. So okay. um part of it is so she's the the first she's my first. Sure. Since the day she was born, like her chunky stuff. Yes. So I have always been there because you know her mom and my brother were young I always tried to go over there and you know give her mom a break because she back then she stayed home with her and that's you know everyone's telling me how hard that was so every day after work I would go and spend a couple hours over there go sleep go go do what you want to do you know, take a break. I bet you she loved you. <laughs> Just so that. I know a couple moms that be like, hey, you want to be a dopped auntie? <laughs> <laughs> Just so she could get a break. Plus, it gave me a chance to bond with my niece. Sure. So, you know, it was a win-win for everybody. But, so we were always close. We were always close. Um, I used to take every weekend. Our little spot when she was younger was the zoo. And we would go, like, every weekend. I can't stand the zoo, but kids love the zoo. Yes. I mean, I'll do it for the kids, but. 
So that was, you know, that was our thing. So I think some of it is because she's, it's changed the dynamic of, you know, the niece auntie bond because sure. she's, you know, at, at my house more than typical aunties. Are the lines blurred? For? Because she's always there. No, because I think because she's been there for so long and the nature of our relationship is just, you know, I'm, I guess, seen as another parent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, but it's always been that way because even when I, you know, even when she wasn't, you know, living, you know, with me sometimes, I saw her every day. Sure. So every day after work, I would go see her. You know, back when I, you know, when I went back for my master's, you didn't see me. She saw me. She was the only person who saw me. Yeah, man. That was two years. And I went, I'll be in my, I'll see you at what spring break and christmas break don't worry i was partying hey oh you oh you oh you done oh dang all right all right but she saw me friends y'all gotta back up because she's uh she's crazy she'll 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 start (laughs) fighting (laughs) y'all but yeah i know what you mean go ahead yeah but like i i still you know would see her you know either right before class or right after class or you know that type of thing yeah sure 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 so um i know so for my third one uh, I know, and again, I'm generalizing and it doesn't mean that all men are this category or all women are this category. Everybody's different, but you know, they sometimes generalize women as being emotional. You know, you guys are the emotional creatures, you're creatures. You're the ones that always break down. And, and I don't look at it like that. I think, um, sometimes being emotional can be an, an awesome thing. It can be a, um, a freeing thing for a woman because we're not readily criticized if we are emotional or we display our emotions on our sleeves, you know, versus men. Sometimes they get um, stigmatized for, you know, showing a little bit of emotion. Why are you crying, man? Why are you doing this? And we have that freedom of, you know, whether we want to laugh, cry, get angry and punch something, we kind of get excused from that. And I, I I do love being able to be an emotional type person because it helps me have empathy for others. It helps me sometimes connect with others because I can share that emotion with them when they're having it. Or, you know, um, sometimes when they don't know quite what that emotion is, being able to help them put a label on it because I've either gone through it or can connect with it somehow. So it just helps me kind of connect with the universe and connect with other people. So um, I love being an emotional being i know you always crack on me about you're so emotional yes but i love being emotional i love getting all the feels i prefer better feels than bad feels but i'll take it all if it helps give me this full you know range of five senses of what it's like to be me as a woman in this universe just making my little way in the world kind of a thing you're looking at me like girl you going so down a hippie hole no no (laughs) No, no, no. It's not that. It's just, you know me. I'm not. I deal with emotions, but I. I do not understand. No, no. I totally understand emotions. It's just that. Go ahead. That, I know, like, that stuff fills you. It gives you energy. It does. It does. That stuff does not give me a high. Dealing with people's emotions drains me. Sure. And I don't know if it's because, I mean, I deal with it at work. Yeah. So not, I'm, I'm good at it. Right. But you're capable of doing yes, it. Yes. And, and I do it very well. It's just after nine, 10 hours, like, I feel you. I need you to keep your emotions to yourself. I feel you. Stay feel you. over there Listen, in that emotional I don't need bubble. It now, I can help seven. you. I don't need it 24 7, but I mean, if it's it takes up the majority of my time or a good chunk of my time, I don't mind. No, I'm okay. I'm good. <laughs> but like, honestly, like all my personality tests come back and say I'm task focused. Yeah. Versus people focus, yes. where you're very people focused, and that's a part, and, of, and that's task- a part of it. Yeah. You know, being able to, as a child, be able to have these emotions and it's not because your judged. parents didn't give you siblings. If you had siblings, you'd be like, keep them, keep your listen. Shit if over it there. makes me the woman I am, I'll take being an only <laughs> child any day. You're not gonna rain on my parade. No, I'm now I know seriously. You're not. So yeah, go ahead. Do you think that because you're a woman, you get asked advice more? Huh. That's a good question and do you think the types of i know because you're thinking about that so i'm going to add on to it yeah go ahead so and do you think that the types of advice people are asking for are specific 
to emotional things or, you know, things that they feel women would be more insightful versus things that like, should I take this job or like money related of, should I, you know, budget this? Like, do you think the types of advice people come to you are geared to you as a woman or you as a person? I'm going to go with a Miss Glam answer and say it depends, right? <laughs> no, um, that's a very good question on both. I don't think that it's because I'm a woman. I think the only thing that connects it to being a woman is it feels a little bit more safe. Mm. Like it feels like a safe place. Um, but I think they, they pick me because I am an awesome advice giver. It's just a matter of if they take it. No, I'm just playing. I think my energy just as an individual is oh, probably what draws them bubbly. to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she looks cool and not going to judge or, you know, she seems like she's, and another thing yeah. too, I lock it down, man. Listen, women don't punch me or, or when you see me, if you ever see me and figure out who I am, women don't try to, you know, write in and complain we tend to be considered the gossipy ones. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some gossipy ass men in the world. So you know who you are. You know so. who you are. But we tend to be the gossipy ones. I love that I can talk smack with everybody. But I also know if somebody comes to me in privacy and they really tell me, I want to talk to you and this needs to stay between us. I do that. So I take pride in being a good secret keeper. I think that's why they come to me. But yeah, there is a little play of the the woman essence to it I think it feels safe it feels like especially if it's a man coming to me it feels like she's not going to judge me for whatever emotion I'm about to give when I'm saying what I gotta say and I don't and then in regard to the other part the advice I think because I am an emotional person and I don't shy from it I do wear my emotions on my sleeve but I can be a tough cookie too when I when the time calls for it but because I can, depending on the scenario, do the action because of the emotion, I think that I get asked a lot because I have that balance of sometimes you got to do it just to do it and take the emotion out of it. You got to use your brain and, and just F the heart. You got you to gotta do what the brain tells you to do. But at the same token, I'm, I'm aware of my emotions enough to say, you know, hey, um, sometimes you got to go with what you feel. And I think because I I would like to think I have that balance and the people that come to me think I have that balance. Um, so either I really have it or I'm a good faker. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, they trust me enough and have seen me move enough to see me have d done it both ways. I can use the brain to, you know, uh, make a decision, but I also can say I choose to be happy and whatever decision I make, I think really hard on it. I analyze it. Sometimes I process it with friends and maybe that's why they come to me because they see that I process stuff. And that way, when I've made the decision, come hell or high water, I don't regret it. It is what it is. And I move forward in anything that comes out of it, good, bad, whatever, is a lesson learned. So I think people come to me because I have that thought process in mind. Is it because I'm a woman? Maybe the emotional connect to it, possibly, and the safe space. I think it's connected to be me, to me being a woman. But good mm. question. Not just you being cute. You know, hey, Hazel, <laughs> Hazel. I see you, Hazel. It is because I'm cute. Too. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I look better than Cleo. Call me now. You know what I'm saying? I can't give a second reading, but if you give me some money, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out some tarot cards quick. <laughs> It's going to be wrong, right. but... You're going to die tomorrow. Oh, my but, gosh. <laughs> but you'll be entertained. You'll be, but you'll be entertained. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, okay, back to you. What is your third one? My third one, again, it, I went back to shallow. So, and I like to think you're a deep person. This is very interesting that you pick some shallow ones. Well, Not in a bad way, or really girly ones. Yeah. It's a girly one, isn't it? Is, it? Well, um, it is girly. You are girlier than me, though. Yes. I'm getting there, yeah. but you're girlier than me. Well, and I guess part of it is, so... I am very independent, like very independent, meaning I am D E M. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> very independent, <laughs> but I do like what, like the old fashioned things. And I say old fashioned because like chivalry, you know, people always say chivalry is dead. Um, but you know, the holding of the doors, the, you know, um, what is my you name? You want to be courted? Uh, you want to go steady? 
Not really, because I don't you have time for that. Jacket. No, I don't have time for all that. <laughs> so, I you just know. I see how old fashioned you are. <laughs> but I do like, you know, don't get me wrong. I do like Shiver. Like, my, oh, what does my niece say? She goes, uh, Bless his heart. No, no. it's fine. We, we always joke, like, when we're getting out of the car and stuff. She goes, Pretty girls don't hold doors. Oh, um, I like that. So, a, <laughs> or no, wait, 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 wait. Pretty girls don't touch doors or something like that. That's, so that's, that's gems for her. Age. So we always like when we're getting out the car, she'll wait for me to open the door, and then she'll go. Pretty girls don't touch doors, and I'm like, really, really. <laughs> so, and then I'll do the thing. I'll do it on the way back, and then we'll both be standing at the door going, and then some guy will walk, <laughs> walk in and hold the door for both of us. So, um. It's I just I open like the them. door, the open the car door, what the else? when what it's else? raining, you give me your jacket so my hair don't get wet and you get soaked. Man, like you don't know that black girl rule. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so wow. Mo Hazel has gone natural and don't care. I don't need it. It's like watering Why a plant. she don't care? I, don't, I, I, I listen, am not. Listen, well, listen, take that back. I still want a jacket. <laughs> I just don't need a jacket. Continue. <laughs> so... I on the hand, while I am natural, I am straight natural, meaning my hairstylist takes a hot, hot heat from a flat iron and makes me bone straight or with curls. Mm-hmm. And when I get wet, I curl up. My sure. hair is wavy. Sure. And no, ma'am, because I can't manage that and keep it healthy. Right. So I need you to give me your jacket. So jacket, door, anything else? I mean, I want it all. I want the whole shebang. When you're being chivalrous, I need you to do it all. Can I? Guy call you ma'am? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. of course. Okay. Like, I know some people get mad and, like, I guess think that, oh, he's saying I'm old. Like, I don't I love see that. manners on a guy. Yes, I they have to have manners. I mean, yeah. I I say yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and yes, sir. And I say, like, I don't care how old you are. You yeah. can be 90 or you can be five. You know, yeah. like, I mean, it depends on, like, I'll tell my niece, no, ma'am. But, yeah, you know, that, that's niece. the difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, as far as, like, to my mom, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Like still, but even at work, like I'll pick up the phone and be like, yes, ma'am. Like if I know, you know, it's a woman calling, yes, ma'am. Sure. Or if I know it, yes, sir. It's just manners. Mm-hmm. I, it's not saying, you know, it's, I don't know. People think that when you say yes, ma'am, or sir, you're giving someone power or you're calling or then some I people think feel they think you're calling them old. Yeah. They say you're giving, you're, you're calling them not. old. It's, it's a term of it's respect. A respect. Yeah. So like. And we're in the South. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. So, I'm in my feelings about that one. No, I, my I niece went tells, down the rabbit hole. I hate no, my when niece are tells like, my niece tells her friends all the time. Add a ma'am to the back of that. Add a ma'am to the back of that. So because I'm telling her that, right? But you know, and I try to teach her that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You know that type of stuff because it's just respectful. But right. I, I've had. Have you ever had a woman tell you don't call her ma'am? Yeah, I, I've a lot of times to the point where texting for it's like I told you stop saying ma'am. Oh, I still I'm do like it. I'm gonna say it. You know, I was taught. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. I don't. Men do it too, believe it or not. Older men. Not as many. It's very few. They'll they'll say, just call me George or call me Bob. Call me Kyle. You know what I mean? Like, uh, um, but they don't, they're not mad about it. They're just like, just call me by my name. With women, it's like, don't call me that. I'm not old. I didn't say you were old. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll explain why, polite. but I'll tell them, and then I, j- I make a joke out of it. So do See, we teach our if, young kids this? Well, <laughs> I, part of it is, is like, I'll, I'll make a joke out of it in the sense of, See, but if my mom was here, she'll whoop my ass, and we not finna have that. Like, I, I get what you're saying, and I'm not, I don't mean it like that, but I don't need to ask whooping. And then we'll laugh, Kiki, and then they be all right. I'm not gonna lie. When they say, don't say ma'am, I say it like a few more times. I like, my bad, I forgot. My bad. Oh, no. I'm just ex- not gonna. I explain. I'm not gonna stop. I explain, but because. Get over it, people. It's okay. Well, it's not just You're that. Not like, old. like I mean, to this day, like, my mom will pop me in the mouth if yeah. I'm being disrespectful, grown or not. Like, she ain't playing with that. So, I, I'm, I don't want to ask whooping. I got you. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. So, let me ask you this. What do you think makes women special? Is it like a secret concept only known to other women? Or is it displayed for all to see and it's quite obvious? But what makes women special? Is it a secret or the world knows how awesome and bomb diggity we are? I think the world knows, but I think I think it's hard to put it into words. Does that make sense? Sure. A little bit. Yeah, I get it. 
So I think the specialness, the uniqueness, the, the things that make women awesome is out there for the world to see. And everyone sees it. But it's hard to put it all in words because we are everything. We just are. We are life. Mother Earth. Yeah. I mean, name something a woman can't do. Grow a penis. <laughs> <laughs> but really, do we want one? Do we want one? I'm not going to answer that because I don't want one. I like to I, 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, like I so, don't know how you want me to answer no, that, Miss Glam. I know, but like, okay, Sorry, do you mama. want do you, do you do you want one protruding? <laughs> no, out? I don't. Yes. I don't. I don't. But that was just I was just being funny. Yes. But uh, no, I think we can do, and if not, we can figure out. I, I I do love the whole ability to even if we have to stop and think about it, we'll get it done. We solve all problems. Yeah. I do. There's I, not a I problem really, a woman can't solve. I, sorry, man. You know, but I, I really do. I agree with you. I really think that there's something marvelous and wonderful. I think because we can't put it into words, it sometimes feels like a secret. Yeah. But if it's you that really, it's really that magic. look at it, because women are so caught up of being in the moment, I think. You know what I mean? Like, if we're dealing with our children, we're so immersed in making these kids happy or getting them to bed, getting them to school, and we're just so immersed in that, that if someone else is stopping to look, they can see the beauty in mm. how you move and, and, and what you do to make that kid happy and how you whip into in, in a day a routine that is clad tight that lingers for the rest of the school year or you know carries them until they become this adult um and i don't think i'm not saying men can't do it i just think it's something that's just built in a woman and it might be because they birth these little humans or you know um that connection they understand because they're more nurturing you know um or like you said that connection having that ability to connect i don't think men can quite move how women can move and then the other thing too I know that women kind of get a bad rap for complaining. And I'm not saying that there aren't some complainers out there. But to me, a woman, because it's not expected of her, you know, with a man, it's kind of expected he's supposed to be quiet and just do what he got to do to provide, right? Or he's just got to, you know, make his own path and figure out what being a man is like. And he has to do it quietly, right? And chivalrously, as you say. But with women, because it's not expected and sometimes they, you know, society throws these negative labels on us. We're the complainers. You know, we're the emotional beings. We're the one that needs to be rescued by a prince. And because it's so unexpected of us that when we do it, it was always there to begin with it. But because it was so allegedly, air quotes, unexpected for us to do it. It's almost like there's a higher level of praise or a higher level of platform of celebrating this woman that is able to achieve the obvious. Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like a secret. I'm going to go with the side of it feels like it's a secret. Mm. Um, because honestly, she's not going to tell you she knew it all along. She's going to let you figure it out. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I've not, you know, how many women have you met that are mothers that will say, and I mean, and they raise their kids to be awesome awesome beings you know they whether they go on to write books or you know become ceos or you know become something amazing and productive in society that woman didn't you know say i knew how to be a mom all along no but, you figure it out you figure it out but what i'm saying but while she's figuring it out she really does know she has it in her yeah. I mean, when you really think about it. It's that level of sacrifice. Once you see that little joy in your hands, you know you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, it's that level of sacrifice. It's whatever it takes. It's whatever it takes. Yeah. Here's your goal. All right. I, I got to do what I got to do to get there. Yeah. And and so, you know, while I think men do tend to, again, not to bash men, tend to um, be the providers of the family, it's almost like, society has said if you go to work or if you do air quote what it's called to provide that task makes you good enough for being the caregiver of your family but for women we have to nurture that being 
we have to be in tune with every personality in that household. We have to know that little Susie's going to be okay. And when she wakes up and she's not okay, we have to check on her. You know, or if little Billy wakes up and he's got anger issues or whatever, we got to check that. Right. You know what I mean? Like we're mm-hmm. so in tune with everybody's personalities and everybody's well-being and everybody's happiness that we sometimes put our own. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And 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 that's a strength to that. And I think it goes so it to me, it is quiet, you know, just that quiet sacrifice versus men are readily celebrated or it's readily known that if the guy goes to work and the guy does this and that, that's it. That's considered they've done their job. And sometimes for women, just being home is not enough. They're made fun of if they're the stay at home mom, they're made fun of if they're the homemakers. Oh, you just did the man. Do you know what that all entails? Do you really do know what that all entails? There's and a reason for the why women I go to work. who go to work and then come home and are the, Come on. You know, so, and they do it without complaint. They do it without complaint. So to me, it's almost like the secret, quiet power. And that's why I say secretive. But Mm -hmm. it is displayed. I mean, trust me, you know, being a woman is bomb. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. (laughs) If you don't think being a woman is awesome, gentlemen, just look at Beyonce. <laughs> Shut it down. She's representing well, hard you know, for the women. Walk a mile in our shoes. Walk Let's a mile see in how her long shoes. you can last. Yeah, yeah. Walk a mile in some heels and, and get back <laughs> with me. And for all you fabulous queens that can do it, man, <laughs> man, we love you too. You, you right there with us. You right there with us. But yeah, let me ask you this. In regard to men, I mean, I know we're on women, but is there anything that you envied from the boys club that you wish you had? Well, I mean, and mine was more, I guess, personal. And I think, I don't know if it was necessarily that you wanted a penis. No, (laughs) never that. Um, but, and it may have been like, it's my upbringing. The boys got it easier. And I don't know if it's the boys got it easier or because they're boys or because I was first. So all, you know, when sure. you're the first born, you know, all the expectations, the hopes and dreams go on to you. You get that Lion King love. <laughs> yeah. That holds you before the village. Ah, <sighs> so when you... Okay, sorry. Yes. Uh-huh. Not my Disney? Okay. <laughs> so, uh uh-huh. Such a great episode. Go binge that one. <laughs> <laughs> episode 31. Keep going. <laughs> but it is my Disney. Anywho. Episode 30. Uh, is it episode 30? Mm-hmm. Binge that. Episode 30. The double standards. So I wasn't allowed to have a boy call my house till, you know, as far as my daddy was concerned, until I'm 30. Sure. But, you know, let the boys have a little girlfriend at five. Go ahead. High five, son. Like, I didn't like that. But it never made me want to go, oh, I want to be a boy. It made me more go, that's not fair, daddy. Just be more hmm, vocal and more not just, I mean, I didn't act out or anything, but go, okay. All right. I see how it is. You know, and then just go, okay, so this rule is rule for just me? All right, we're not going to follow that rule. Sure. So those were the things that made me feel like, I don't know if I like these double standards mm-hmm. versus, you know, but it was more like, it's a parent thing. Make sense? Sure. Sure, sure, okay. sure. I'll say for me, I guess it's a complaint at being as a woman. Um, and so therefore, I wish that. I was treated like a boy because I feel like if I were a man doing the same thing, it wouldn't have been an issue. But like, you know, um, questioning my smarts, um, you know, my knowledge level and questioning my leadership ability. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if I'm in charge of something, it's always hands up questions. But I feel like if I was a man, it wouldn't be as many questions Mm. and it wouldn't be as many you know, concerns before. And don't get me wrong, as a woman, I'm going to answer every single one of them. I am going to make you feel comfortable and we're going to move on and we're going to do the task. And once I get everybody comfortable, there goes the questions. I just shouldn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And then in regard to knowledge, I'm not saying I say so, I don't say some dumb shh. Okay, I do. I do all the time. Okay, I put my foot in my mouth all 
the time. But when it comes to doing a task at hand, you know, I, I can get it done and what I don't know, I can figure out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a brainiac, but I would like to think I can put myself at the same table with smart people because while they may readily rattle it off, I'm the type that I'm going to double check because whatever comes out my mouth, I need it to be correct because I know that I'm going to be held accountable for my actions or someone's judging me because I am a female. And so I go back and double check. And sometimes those smarty arties think they know the answer. And because I don't, I, you know, I treat everything like mm-hmm. an open quiz mm-hmm. and I check my book before I answer. Um, I've rattled the right answer and they have rattled the wrong answer. And now it makes me look smarter. I don't go. And then that sometimes can be an issue because now you try to be smart. No, I use the book. Clearly yeah. I, I cheated on this test, <laughs> you know, but uh, does that make me smart? I don't know. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is I don't feel in my mind, I can't do something that someone that I feel might be uh, intelligent or, you know, intellectually intellectually superior seeming, I can do the same things that they can do. And sometimes even better because I don't like that second guessing in my head or I don't want people thinking I'm un- incapable of doing it. I'll sometimes make sure that I'm doing it as best as I can before I go out, even if it means calling Miss Glam. Miss Glam, mm-hmm. before I do this, mm-hmm. check my answer. Is it good? Is it's it good? Because I have it's memory. That's all. Yeah. I can memorize and remember, you know, all those things that people are told to forget. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So that was, we'll wrap this up and keep it kind of short and sweet and light. Um, I guess, okay. So to close, we'll do it like this. I'll let you pick which one you're going to do. And then I'll take the other end. Um, either give uh, to women out there who feel like, man, or those girls out there, man, it's so easier being a boy. I wish I was a boy sometimes. Preach to them the awesomeness of being a woman or for the woman who needs a little bit more self-love and they don't want to be a boy, but they just don't understand yet their power. What advice would you give to them to help them hone in on that power that makes them a beautiful princess and then a queen and then just a leader of this whole free world. Okay, the second. So I think I knew you would by the way. I, know. <laughs> I think for I think for, you know, any woman who's trying to find their inner strength, find what you're good at, what you're passionate about, what you love and use that. Because I think that's what make or what makes women great that that thing that you can't really put your put words around mm-hmm. is the fact that I'm sure there is a dictionary word and we'll come across I'm sure. it one day. <laughs> but um it's the it cuz it's different in all of us. It's the whatever is whatever you're you know you're good at you excel at whatever is those things that you can do and it doesn't have to be, you know, being Beyonce and singing your heart out. It, it, it could be something that you see as a small, but that thing that you're good at, that you just channel to to just flourish. Yeah. yeah. Just flourish. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny. Um, we were talking about this before, but, you know, I'm generalizing. So, again, you know, I know that people can really be their own individual, but it's so funny with women People are always like, oh my gosh, you guys are all so different. You all, you know, I don't understand women, right? (laughs) And then with men, it's like, it's so simplistic. Like, we're all the same. We're all this. We're all this. Like, they're, they, they come together as being one type of guy or maybe three or four type of guys. But with women, it's like, you got the independence, you got the the boss ladies, you got the this, you got the this. I mean, they really try to, and then they run out of categories because there's st- we're still going. There's yeah. still so many categories. It's because we pride in being such an individual. Yeah. We really pride in just knowing that we don't want to be the same as someone else. We want to be our own woman. Well, and we can do what we want to do. So I think some of that is is we're fluid. We're we fluid. Are. We can fit in all those categories at any given time yeah. because we have all those titles, you know, 
mother, sister, daughter, aunt, friend, like all those different titles and all those hats that we continue to pile on and pile on and pile on. And it's just endless. Yeah. And we're able to do it all and do it flawlessly. Exactly. Exactly. Um, So to take the other side of the house in regard to women who feel like, you know, sometimes it's life seems easier for being a boy. I'm not saying that at times it may not seem to be true and that men sometimes can have it a little easier. I won't even argue with you on that. But who likes the easy? Like there's a beauty to being challenged because every time you're challenged or every time, you know, life isn't easy for you, once you get past it, another layer is shed to this beautiful being that you're about to be. And so, you know, sometimes, what is it? It takes pressure to make diamonds. Mm. Isn't that what Mm -hmm. they say? You know what I mean? So sometimes, you know, men don't like to get called diamonds. You know what I'm saying? Unless they fabulous, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. but they don't like to get called diamonds. We handle that pressure and I know it sucks to, to go through it. But when we get to the end of it, it just creates this beautiful layer of who we are. Yeah, and it's and that so defining. And once you have it, you can't take it back. And yeah. man, it just rides with you. And I think every time you come across a challenge, it gets easier and easier until you're just like, bring that shit on. And it becomes effortless. We just got to get through it a couple times. Mm-hmm. So I think if you just, if you're a young lady, because usually it's young women who think like this, you know, the young teenagers of the so world. Final themselves. You ain't been through but two obstacles, dear. We've been through 25. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you know, it gets easier and it gets better. And I'm telling you, an adult woman, there ain't nothing she can't do. She is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I mean, she is. She really is. And I think if you hold on to get to there, you'll realize that it is an honor. It is a pleasure. And I would and 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 God did it right when he made your ass a girl. No disrespect to the men of the world, but you know, for all those that are women, God did it right. God did it right. Hold on. You about to be a diamond baby. <laughs> Go ahead and shine, baby. Go ahead and shine, baby. <laughs> Look at my little magic. Go ahead and shine, baby. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. So, we love you women. We love you too, kings. We love you too. Um, we're going to move on to petty word of the day. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's do this, girl. Okay. So, petty word of the day is where we take a new shiny word that we got out the dictionary. And we, me, 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 mainly me, had to figure out how to pronounce. And uh, didn't pronounce it right. And I, probably I, I butchered it. I want people to come on and comment about how she butchered it. You know what? Words. I would love for them to, to check my vocabulary. <laughs> but no, um, we, we teach you this brand new vocabulary word. And we hope that you learn it by putting it in sentences. And so on our show, we like to put it in pretty petty sentences because that's all we know how to do is be petty. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. So with that being said, Miss Glam. You go first. So my word for today is balkanize. Balkanize. And it's a verb. It means to break up into smaller and often hostile units, divide or comp... comp. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Talking about me. Go to ahead. To break up into smaller and often hostile units, divide... Compartmentalize. Co- co- ah, I can't speak. To break up into smaller and often hostile units... Divide, compartment, com- compartmentalize. You need me? No. You need to phone a photo friend? To break up oh, into smaller and often hostile units, divide my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping all that in no, there. You're not. <laughs> my sentence this week is this week's activities are overwhelming. So I have balkanized them into manageable pieces. That's cute. Yeah. School starts, and man, you feel like you a student too, huh? School. You P- got your curriculum. P- PTSA, work. Uh, like, she has had no homework. All of her homework has been for me. <laughs> Sign this, <laughs> pay this, do this. Like, And that's day one? Uh, well, day I two. I mean, we're on day two, but yeah. was that day one? No, day one and day two. I keep getting homework. Like, I need her to have homework. Dude, you were telling me about how you got to pay for supplies and stuff for the art class? Yeah. Boy. 
I have to no. So I have to buy supplies, then I have to provide a class fee. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I don't know. Maybe that's the norm for middle school. I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't when we were going. If you had glue sticks and color pencils, you were good. You were, you were, you had the rich family. I better <laughs> see some lovely art. Right. Like, and I'm going to need a Picasso. Stuff, I need stuff to hang on my wall. Right. And, and, and show off. And I want, I want projects this year. I need something that I could just, like, rent a gallery. <laughs> well, and honestly, <laughs> like, nowadays with technology, like, there's this website where all the child's art will be on this website where you can see the stuff they're doing in class. Oh, you know what's so funny? So, my niece... I'm sure they'll do that with my nephew, too, who's just too little right now. But their artwork, they can turn them into stickers and... Really? Yeah, look on that wall right there. You see that? That's the sticker? That's her artwork. Um, They can do, um, what is it, uh, mats for like, uh, what is it, the computer mats? Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you just, you load the picture up and you use the, the but picture? But I, I think it's connected to the school that they oh, do Really? It. I think it's how they raise money. <gasps> I don't know. I think it's how it raised money. My sister in law is like, you got it all the way wrong. <laughs> uh, but I really do think it's because it was from the school. Just take my money. Right? I always buy all her crap. Right? Yeah. It's exactly. not crap. It's beautiful, lovely stuff. Yeah, I heard but you the first time. I know. But mm-hmm. just take my money. Just mm-hmm. here. Just, I'm but just isn't that kind of cool? That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need them to do that. I'm going to be broke. <laughs> I'm going to be broke enough as it is, but I really right. broke after that. So, my word, kismet, kismet, and it's a noun, fate, destiny. Our friendship was kismet, and you are forever meant to love and annoy me until we get old and gray. Oh, I'm going to love and annoy you when we get old and gray. I told you. We're going to leave tech support home, and we're going to travel the world. Tech support got to stay home, though. Somebody got to pay the mortgage. Yeah. And watch <laughs> the house. He got to check my house, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Security. Security. But we're going to travel the world. And, you know, by then, he'd be like, you know. I'm too tight. Just go. Yes. Just go. He can sleep. Matlock's on. You know, the niece <laughs> won't. The niece won't take pictures of him sleeping. Aww. <laughs> I was talking to him two seconds ago, and now he's sleep. Yes, and she sent a picture. Aww. Anywho, well, this was a great show. It was. Yeah, I like being. Did you feel empowered today? I have felt empowered all day. I've had to. That is what's got me through. That fact that I know that you're a diamond. Yes. Yeah, man. Yes. They pressured the hell out of you. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Uh, but you still standing. Yes. And yes, guess what man. else? You know what else? What? It's my birthday. It's uh, my birthday. Uh, uh, it's my birthday. Uh, uh, hey. Uh. Okay. Happy birthday to you. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> but happy birthday, boo. You just age like wine. You're an amazing human being. We're glad you're on the planet another no. year. And, uh... I'm kind of scared for this trip because you hear her saying it's my birthday. So That's I will non-stop. say that the entire trip. I'm from trying to start kiss her butt now to finish. In hopes that she get tired. And you know my sister coming. So both of y'all are going to be annoyed. Oh, God. I'm going to have to. We're going to have to tag. Tag. No. You deal with her. Mm-mm. Tag. You Mm-mm. deal with her. But um, we're uh, we're excited. I'll speak on behalf of your sis. Um, we're excited to hang of with course. you and celebrate yeah. another year. Celebrating me of is you. awesome. And you know what? You know why I'm going to like it? Because we'll be the same age. No, we're not. We're never the same age. We are the same You're age on older. your birthday. You're we're still the same older. Age. You're still older. Miss Glam, do you have anything else to say? You're older. Till next time. Since it's your birthday, I'll let it go. <laughs> and we are out.